Let's walk through how to create a table in WData. Tables are stores of data. You can upload files to them manually. You can use chains to automate pushing uh, data to those tables. And then those tables can later be referenced in queries to be pushed to your connected spreadsheet. First, we're going to show you the manual way of creating tables, and then we'll show you a slightly simpler way in the next video. So from our menu, from our WData menu, we'll go to Create Table. Once we do that, we have this interface that's, that's open. We can enter our table name. I'll call this Manual Data Table. Uh, the description here is optional. I won't enter anything in, but it's typically best practice to type in uh, a description here so that way you know what is the purpose of this table, what type of data it does for. Um, table type, we have two types. There's fact tables and dimension tables. The easiest way to think about this is fact tables store numerical data. Dimension tables will store things like hierarchies, uh, metadata, which is about your data. So for example, uh, in your fact table, you might have a $100 charge to account 123. In your dimension table, you might say account 123 rolls up to my income statement and so forth. So that way, if you wanted to do higher level analysis, you can, you can do that. Um, it's not 100% the case, but you know my rule of thumb is if there's going to be numerical data in the table, make it a fact, otherwise make it a dimension. For the folder, we can enter a folder to put this table in just for organization purposes. You don't have to put in a folder and then everything will be at, at your root directory. I recommend having a folder structure in place because remember all your WData components, your, your tables, your queries, are all going to um, show up in the same place. So it's a very good idea to have it organized with tables in one folder, queries in another folder, and then subdividing based on the purpose. So we're, um, this is where we can upload a, a file or provide a spreadsheet to have WData automatically set up our, our columns for us. We'll show that in the next video, which will be the easy way to create tables. For now, we'll, we'll show the manual way. Um, so once we have this top section filled out, now it's a matter of adding the columns uh, to, the, to the table. So we have display names and the IDs, which are the two most important or, or required uh, pieces of the first three boxes here. So I'm just going to call this ID, let's just say. And then we're going to make column ID ID here. Now our data type, we have a few items to choose from here. Text is anything that is going to be um, stored with you know, letters and, and characters. Also, you might have things like uh, account numbers where you may have leading zeros on the data. In that case, you'll wanna make sure that you store it as a text because just like in Excel, Try to enter a number and you start with a zero, Excel is going to strip off that lead zero. It'll do the, the same thing here in the data table. So text is for numbers that you know, may start with zeros or um, anything that has uh, text characters in it. Integer is for numbers that don't have any decimal places, so one, two, three, etc. If you have 1.2, that would be a decimal. Uh, because it, it has decimal places in there. Boolean is uh, true, false, one, zero, um, yes, no, pretty much just a, a binary. Um, it, has, it has a value or, you know, or it doesn't type of, uh, type of situation. Timestamp is if you want to store the date and time of the record, you know, um, and then date is if you just want to have, have the date. So I'll make my ID an integer. One thing that's important to pull out is whatever data types you have in here, make note of this because when you go to creating queries, you create any types of parameters or prompts, the data type of the parameter has to match the data type of the column in here. You can add additional columns by clicking this green 
add column button. So I will put a date here. Just a date, just a date field. Our import format here populates where you can specify the format that the date is going to be stored in. So thing to note here is that you want the format here to match um, what you're going to upload or input. So if you're going to use chains to populate this table and you specify YYYY MMDD, you can't do MMDD YYYY as what you're inputting here. It's going to, it's going to fail. So just uh, keep a note of that. Same thing, like if I do a timestamp, it's going to ask the, the format there. So just um, keep those requirements here in mind. And I will do a decimal. And I will do a text just to show you what these import formats look like over here. So decimal places, um, you know, it gives you the ability to determine do you want commas, do you not want commas, do you want apostrophe instead they're just accounting for different different formats. So I'm just going to put in my time here. If I don't populate these when I hit create table it's not going to let me save this. So once we hit the create button to create the table, we see that now our columns and the data types are all locked in. You see this data set tab here off to the right where we can populate this table based on you know, uploading a file, referencing a spreadsheet, or referencing the results of, of a query. Reason I, I call this out is that it's, it's important after you create the table to push data to it to make sure that uh, you captured all of the um, column types, et, et cetera, um, down and you have all the, all the columns that you need, just so that way you have every, you're sure that nothing's getting kicked out when you push this, this data set. Next, we'll show you an easier way to, to go about creating the table as well as the adding the data set.